Well, it seems like we're getting healthier. Um, well, we're excited to play Ole Miss. Excited to have a night game. You know, we haven't had played one this year. Um, we understand how very talented and physical Ole Miss is, and well coached. Uh, very, very played very well this year, and but we're looking forward to the opportunity. We'll begin with Andrew Hutchison at the Best of Arkansas Sports. Yes, yeah, Sam, I noticed that there's been some reports about Warren Thompson. Could you give us an update on his status? Yeah, he's, he quit the team. And I know he's been one of your uh, top receivers in terms of playing time that leaves a hole there for you. Who do you see maybe stepping up in his absence? Well, Jaden Wilson would be the, the, the fifth guy up. Um, obviously, Warren hadn't started a whole lot of games you know, with Matt and all those things, but... Uh, Jaden Wilson, to answer your question, would be the the next guy in that rotation. Thanks. Next is Chip Towers at the AJC. Hey, Sam, how you doing? Hi, Chip. Hey, uh, you know, obviously you guys got the last look at LSU and Georgia's got to play them in the SEC championship game. Uh, what can you uh, what, what can you tell? us about the matchup of Georgia versus Harold Perkins Jr. I know you guys struggled uh, in, in that regard, and um, that he also was able to get after LSU's quarterback a little bit, too. What's what's Georgia got to be aware of on, on those two fronts? Well, I'm sure I'm sure Kirby will have it all figured out. He always does. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're very talented. They've got to stop the quarterback uh, as – as uh, everybody knows, and uh, Perkins is a beast. He's fast. He's you know he spied our guy. He got a couple of sacks from spying the quarterback, and we you know our quarterback's fast too. But he ran him down. So uh, they're very physical on defense. Um, uh, very very physical on offense. They want to run the ball, uh, but the quarterback's the key, obviously, to their offense and. Got to find a way to block Perkins, like you said. You pretty much answered. They're 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 a really good football team on the D line as well. Uh, very physical. They're at what you'd think LSU would be. I appreciate it, Coach. Good luck against Ole Miss. Thank you. Next, we have Tom Murphy of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Hey, Sam, when you said in your opening that you feel like you're being getting healthier, uh, I'm assuming that means KJ. Can you update us on his his status? Well, he's practiced most every play this week, uh, so I feel good about him. Um, Dalton Wagner also uh, has practiced a lot this week, um, and uh, I have uh, cut the suspension off of uh, Slusher, so he – he, he has practiced this week as well. So um, we're probably about as healthy, healthy as we've been for a long, long time. And and uh, certainly there's some soreness in all uh, in those first two I talked about. But uh, that's going to happen in week game number 11 in our league. So I feel pretty good about all those guys. Okay. And I know you want to get your running game going to a, a larger degree. And, Specifically in goal to goes, you guys have had your struggles there. Um, can you maybe speak to uh, what what it needs to happen to fire that up more? Well, I think uh, obviously we're having edge problems, um, so uh, we have tried to close edges out. I think we have to uh, be willing to play action, throw the football down there, um, and uh, certainly we have to get some knock not back, uh, you know, off the ball. We've got to knock them off the ball, uh, which we're not getting enough of those uh, right now. And But our, our biggest problem early early down there has been edge pressure. Um, you know, the other night if we if we pulled the ball, got a walk in, and we just – and our reads have been a problem a little bit as well. So all those things in combination. But the bottom line is if – if you're going to be a good offense, you, you've got to you've got to score touchdowns down there, and we're certainly trying to figure that out and continue to work on that. 
Uh, sorry, Jeff, I want to just jump one more in here. On the walk-in, uh, Reed, do you mean the second down play uh, from the two? Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Thank you. Next up, uh, Steve Moulton, a WZZN. Coach, appreciate the time. Hope you're doing well today, sir. Thank you. Uh, wanted to ask about the portal uh, be, because uh, from the press conference that I heard earlier in the week, has your philosophy changed maybe a little bit uh, in regards to the portal moving forward there uh, for the Arkansas program, Coach? Uh, my mind has. I don't, you know, I, I, I still, I still want to get 20 or so high school kids. You know, it just depends. What probably changed more than anything is the availability uh, to get to 85 instead of 25. Uh, where my mind before was, I, I, I always want to recruit high school kids and get to 20 if I can, minimum, and then go to the portal. Well, now, uh, you know, you could have 30 scholarships, 32 scholarships, whatever it may be in a year, and, and now your portal, uh, transfer portal, will be uh, more numbers. I still want to, I still want to recruit high school, but because of the change in the 25 to 85 rule, uh, I've changed my mind a little bit more in what we can do to address, uh, some areas on the team we need to address number wise and talent wise. And with uh, Ole Miss coming in uh, this weekend, coach, uh, I, I can't help but ask of, uh, the last impression you saw of Ole Miss. What impressed you about the uh, Ole Miss team against Alabama last weekend, Coach? They came out ready to play. Um, could have won the game as easily as lost the game. Had the lead, very physical. Their team plays extremely hard. Their defense has certainly got a lot better. They seem to get better each and every week and, and played a really physical had a really nice scheme, uh, blitz pattern uh, against the run. I thought last week, and and Darts a heck of a player, and so is Judkins. Their offensive line is playing really well, and Mingo's a superstar, and uh, and so are the other two wideouts, Heath and Watkins. But they played extremely hard, uh, played their hearts out, and Alabama just found a way to win there. You know, at the end of the game. Thank you, Coach. Next, we have Austin Eldridge of the Rebel Wall. Hey, Coach. Um, I, I was impressed watching KJ on the sidelines when you were playing LSU, really encouraging the, the other QBs. Just wanted to ask you about how important his leadership is for your team. Uh, coming back healthy and also what it means with that leadership playing a big game like Ole Miss with a chance to get bowl eligible? Well, I think it's a, a huge deal because uh, KJ's one of those leaders that leads the entire team, you know, not just not just the offense. So it, it, it's big for us. You know, we, we challenged him whenever we figured out that he wasn't going to be able to play. Felipe Franks did the same thing to him two years ago in his first start uh, when we went to Missouri and and uh, he was Felipe was very encouraging and and seeing things and talking to him on the sideline during that entire game. That was KJ's first start since since I've been here, and uh, he did the same thing. I thought he did. He was he was well into the game, focused. Uh, just unfortunately, he wasn't healthy enough to play. Thank you, coach. Next, we have Mike Griffith of the AJC. Uh, hey, Coach, I want to get you to go back in the memory bank a little bit. It's my itch a little off the wall. Did you see any staples or similarities between the, the LSU team uh, that you faced this year and, and what you saw from Brian Kelly going back to 2019 with Georgia? I mean, I know there's new faces, new names, and it's been three years, but from, and from a schematic standpoint, I mean, I guess everybody's trying to contrast LSU and Georgia a little bit, so that's where I'm going with this. Well, uh, I think looking at Coach Kelly, his, I think he's stolen the ball more, you know, now than than in the past. Uh, uh, certainly, they still have the 
big, trying to be, you know, physical, uh, downhill running game. Uh, he has a new weapon in, in a dual threat quarterback, you know, which they're using extremely well and they should because he's, he's a, a, a great, uh, runner a, along with the thrower. Uh, defensively, a lot of, you know, they're still four, four man front for a lot of the times, uh, still have, uh, you know, user nickel, their third down packages are, are still very, very good. Um, they had a good plan against us with spying on Perkins and he's a, he's a difference maker. Uh, but other than that, I, they're, they're, they're got Brian Kelly all over them because they're a physical, well coached. Uh, football team. Thank you, Coach. Let's go wrap you up, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, uh, good week of practice so far. Um, uh, really challenging opponent coming up uh, on the road at night. So last time we went there, we didn't play very well. So it's a big challenge for us. Questions, press 1-0, and we'll begin with Tom Murphy of the Arkansas Duke Crack is that. Pretty wild one. There's been a few like that in this series. Very entertaining for the fans. I wonder if a game like that is your idea of a good time, and, and, and would you have gone for two maybe in the same position that Sam did last year? Um, good question. I probably wouldn't have, um, because we were at home and probably would have kept playing. But also, that doesn't mean that's right. Usually, you know, you do go for two in a high-scoring game like that, so that you, know, you have the last shot. And I, I mean, was that your kind of game? Uh, we won, so it was. I don't care if they're high or low scoring. Um, I just want to win them. So, uh, but you know that's like a football thing that I feel everyone you coach. Oh, I even said after the game, when everybody's like, "Oh, you guys finished? You know how to finish?" I'm like, "No, they just didn't make two point play." Have they? Then everybody be saying, "Oh, they know how to finish, and we don't." So much like some of these games, as you've seen late around the country where they go down to the last play and everybody all of a sudden when one play goes one way, they, you know, the one program's got it all figured out and the other one doesn't. So, um, you know, that game was very um, competitive and obviously could have went either way. Gotcha. Hey, uh, Arkansas with KJ, without KJ, are, are, are they – what makes them more explosive, better with KJ in the lineup? You think? Um, I mean, he's obviously a problem because he's so physical, and um, when he runs the ball and can make you miss, can run you over, uh, you know. And we had a major issue with them, especially later in the game, is you know if they're moving the ball and making first downs, you know that system tires you out. Dan Harrelson of USA Today Sports. Hey, Coach. Uh, with your offense and obviously Arkansas under Kendall Bryles and really Tennessee and, and Josh Heifel, do you see more similarities or, or more differences between especially the Ole Miss and Arkansas but also maybe Tennessee in that little uh, three-team group? Uh, yeah, I think there's a there is um, difference in the offenses and have kind of evolved different directions. And um, so, I mean, I think all three snap the ball fast and um, have similar mechanics of how it's run from a tempo standpoint. But I think the systems have kind of grown apart. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Next is Austin Eldridge with Rebel Wall. 
Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, the forecast this weekend is supposed to be extremely cold, which is somewhat unusual for games around here. Does that play any real factor in how you guys prepare or how the game is played, or is it just another non-football factor that you guys just kind of put out of your mind? No, I think, you know, if it comes to rain or wind, you know, then that affects different things in game planning and stuff. But when it's just cold, um, it's, both, it's the same for both teams. So that doesn't affect uh, game planning. Next, we have Steve Molta, WZZN. Coach, hope you're doing well. Appreciate the time as always, sir. As much as uh, we talk about your Ole Miss uh, run game and uh, the running backs, but I wanted to talk about the offensive line and specifically the two freshmen along your O-line. How well have they adapted, you think, to your offense, Coach? Uh, I think they've done a great job. Difficult for freshman linemen to play anywhere, especially the SEC. Uh, so it's been very challenging for them. They've done a really good job. And heading back to uh, the fall, there was uh, a real debate at quarterback. So what kind of growth have you seen out of Jackson this season to make him your starter and stick with him this long, Coach? I think he's done a good job protecting the ball and running the offense and um, has really cut down turnovers from the beginning of the season and is doing a good job. And if I heard you correctly earlier in the week, Coach, you don't like to be cold, so how much uh, winter weather gear are you taking up to Fayetteville? A lot. I've um, been in contact with Realtree, and um, they're sending me uh, heated hunting gear uh, for underneath, so I'll be prepared. Thank you, Coach. Yep. We have, a fo- we have a follow-up from Tom Murphy. Yeah, that's an outstanding move right there. Um, Arkansas has been playing a, a new kid at cornerback, number 24, just the last two games. I wonder what you've seen in him. I think it maybe allowed them to go a little pressure, more pressure. Yeah, he's done a great job, um, you know, playing the freshman. I think he was a receiver before and um, really looks like a special player. And did you note uh, that maybe Arkansas sent more pressure last week against LSU and maybe you guys anticipate some of the same? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, we always got to be ready for everything. Coach, that's going to be all the questions today. Thank you.